So I've got this uh, Hayden Kirk uh, guided rail. So nice bearings on either side, ball screw through the middle, uh, stepping motor uh, with the US digital encoder uh, connected to a SP4 four axis uh, stepper drive. Um, this little motor only needs about an amp and a half and can run off a 24 or 48, maybe 48 for full speed. But uh, what I'd like to do is uh, home to a hard stop. So uh, I set uh, go in the negative direction, slow to start, then fast to come out a quarter rev, 5,000 micro steps with some acceleration. And I hit the home button. And what do you know? Home to hard stop requires an encoder. Uh, okay. Well, it looks like I forgot to hook up the encoder. Uh, just kidding. Uh, what, what I want to do today is uh, figure out how this stall detection works. So we'll take a look at, uh, first we'll look at the motor here. Uh, it's a stepping motor and uh, bipolar, 1.5 amps, got some resistance and inductance. <clears throat> I measured about four millihenry and maybe a little bit more ohm, so kind of question the data a little bit, but let's go with it. Uh, 37 gram centimeters squared for the inertia. I think that's just the motor without all the ball screw on there and whatnot. But uh, so in the beginning, we just configure the motor spec, you know, Hayden Kirk, actuator, inertia, in resistance. I bumped the inductance up because that's what I measured with my inductance meter. Um, the rated torque, uh, well, it gives you a force. Uh, you could backwards calculate that based on efficiency. The motor is more forceful than, or more torque than, you know, the inefficiency lost to the output of force. Uh, and then uh, the rated current, 1.5 amps, uh, 1.8 degrees, 200 full steps. And I've got this set to 20,000 micro steps per rev. We should match that to the encoder, whatever the line count is. But I'm not using the encoder now because I'm going to do home to a hard stop with stall detection. Uh, so all that's good to save the flash. Um, I got the current loop already tuned and I'm just using one amp for boost and run and a half an amp to hold afterwards with a hold run to hold time of 500 milliseconds. We could boost it. That's not going to mess up the stall detection, but it it will uh, affect the amount of voltage at the output. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna leave it all constant here. So one point, uh, one amp and 1.5 is a little bit of voltage for IR drop, but you can see as I'm moving back and forth here at this uh, 480 RPM, uh, I've got this velocity 20,000 uh, micro steps per rev and 480 RPM. Uh, I'm going to have a voltage, and I'm measuring about 20 some odd volts. Uh, if you go faster, you get more voltage. It's the back EMF, right? So no speed, no voltage, high speed, high voltage. And if you stall, then the back EMF collapses and the voltage comes down. So that's what we're going to detect is something within a, you know, window of a threshold level to see if it falls too low. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, we can test out different speeds and see the voltages. Um, this is 120 RPM. Uh, we get about six volts, which makes sense. Uh, it's uh, one quarter of the 24 volts approximately, approximately that we were getting for 480. And then we'll go 60 RPM. So there's a, it's like a back EMF constant. There's a constant of proportionality. The faster you go, the more voltage, the slower you go, the less voltage. So this three volts here is approximately, uh, you know, at 60 RPM, you're going to get about three volts. Uh, the, I'm going to set a threshold maybe around a couple of volts. So there's a little bit of window and margin for noise. Um, so we'll take a look now at a CVM indexer program used to detect the stall. And of course, the stall occurs uh, when you when you get into the... Uh, the hard stop, we hit the hard stop. And yeah, you can see, yeah, the voltage is dropping. There it is, drops in voltage, plus a 
definitely dropping when it's uh, driving into the hard stop, but uh, we'll see how fast we can detect that. Um, my program's going to disable the drive output stage, so I'm going to trigger on the disabling of the drive. Uh, so we'll set the the time. Um, 500 mil that ought to do it um anyway so i've got the um i got a cvm control program running right now in the background uh, i'm going to use that to do home to a hard stop with using the stall detect but let's take a peek at the uh the program here so i'm going to use an input to make it go but it's just waiting for a go command but the first step will be move at a velocity of 60 rpm forever until you hit the hard stop uh, wait for some time delay to get up to speed. It, maybe you don't need this. I just put that in there. It's because I'm just measuring at speed. Um, but then again, it's a constant of proportionality. Um, I'm going to read two parameters, uh, 0x3b in the parameter dictionary is the instantaneous or the profile velocity, the instantaneous commanded velocity in units of 0.1 encoder counts per second. I got 20,000 counts per rev, I'm going 60 RPM or one rev a second. So I multiply 20,000 by 10 and I get, you know, 200,000. And then this other parameter is the voltage. It's a voltage terminal stepper, <sighs> current loop output D axis of the rotor space state model, uh, units are 0.1 volts or the terminal voltage stepper. So that's what we displayed on the scope there. These are the two parameters we're going to get. I'm going to store it into R1. Let's view the, the register parameters. Uh, I'm going to get R2, which is the voltage. Uh, there's the, the speed minus this 200,000 uh, voltage uh, plus uh, 2.5 volts. And uh, these are normalized readings here in R3 and R4. So I'm going to set R3 equal to R1 times minus 1 to make it a positive number. And then I'm going to multiply this by a constant of proportionality plus like 1.2% or something to give it a little margin or a threshold. Uh, I'm going to store that in, in a value for R4. When R4 is less than R3, then I know my voltage has gone down. So I'm doing a conditional jump. As long as R4, the voltage is greater than the speed, then we're good and keep uh, looping on uh, sequence zero, step three, read the parameters, do the math, do the comparison. And if it does become less than the speed or the voltage becomes less than it should, disable the drive, uh, you're in the hard stop, and then uh, move a quarter rev, 5,000 counts out of the hard stop, and then set that position uh, 0x17, uh, I'm going to set it to zero. So say, uh, set uh, the actual motor position uh, to zero, active load position in units of micro steps to zero. So that's the homing routine. Uh, I'm going to clear that, hit record. There it goes, went to the negative, hit the hard stop, disabled, came back out. And uh, we can see the events here. Uh, just going to zoom in. So I'm, I'm cruising along at 60 RPM. I'm going towards the hard stop. I got about three volts here. And then look, the voltage starts to drop. I get close to two volts here. Uh, that, that may be sufficient. Um, and then the drive disables. So I'm in the hard stop. And then after that, come out of the hard stop, move quarter rev, and then stop, and then set the position to zero. So this is really the time it takes. Uh, once we detect that the voltage is dropped down, somewhere in this area here, I presume, this looks like about the time it takes for a, uh, a few commands of the CVM indexer. Yeah, it's about two milliseconds. So maybe a couple of lines of code at a millisecond each. And then uh, there's a disable line of code, <clears throat> about 1.5 milliseconds. 
and then uh, after the disable, maybe two milliseconds later, yeah, it sets up the trajectory to make the move out. Um, so yeah, within like two milliseconds, we ought to be able to detect a drop in the voltage and come to a stop. Uh, we can repeat this uh, home to hard stop from any position. And now, now that I'm uh, in a position mode and I'm referenced to home, so my home, my reference, uh, well, it's not set here. I'll have to set it. Um, but I've been homed uh, using the CVM program. Uh, I can execute a move. Uh, down to the other end there, and uh, let's see how that how that works and how that looks. Oh, that didn't go all the way. Let's go all the way to the end there. There it goes, right off the screen. And then we'll go back to absolute zero position. I'm at full speed here stop trace i'm going to put in voltage bus uh because i'm using the voltage and uh we'll do voltage event status warning voltage limited you're always voltage limited with a stepper uh, you got to make sure your currents don't drop down to zero so actual current so that's what we'll monitor so right back to bam right to the zero position uh, no trigger, trigger setup, select in motion, okay, okay, record. All right, I didn't go too far, and uh, reading trace data, we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, so here's the voltage when you're going fast, it's uh, around 40 volts or so. Uh, if I go too fast, I'm going to get a stall condition. Let's see if I can go too fast to zero. There it goes. So I'm halfway there and I stall in the middle. And see, well, let's see what a stall detect looks like while we're running. Yeah, so yeah, it's a little trickier to measure the voltage threshold, but it seems to be stalling about here because I, I noticed my currents are going a little wacky. Here's a here's a zero current. So maybe maybe it really stalled right about there. Uh, it's a little challenging just to read the voltage while you're moving along. But in this case, if you look at the voltage and the current quickly enough or fast enough, you should be able to detect a stall. So maybe a real stall detect feature in a firmware would not only look at the voltage, but also look at the, uh, the current and make sure everything agrees with what it's supposed to be. Um, as you can see, uh, your current's supposed to fold back when you're going fast and you have back EMF, but if all of a sudden you get more voltage because you're stalled, uh, then your, your current kind of goes up. But here it's, first it hit zero before it came up, and then uh, it's definitely lost its ability to, uh, to move properly. So this is during this, continue to stall, but the, the initial stall was somewhere back in here. Okay, so uh, that's uh, it to summarize. Uh, you can do home to a hard stop with stall detect relatively easy. Just set the parameters of the system based on what you're doing. You know, the speed, the motor, uh, the, the, the threshold levels, uh, real simple uh, back EMF stall detection. Uh, it's not designed here to do while you're moving stall detection, but there's an encoder. So, you know, if you lose your position or need accuracy, there's an encoder. Um, and, but uh, yeah, if you're banging into the end over there because you disabled somewhere in the middle and you didn't home, well, then you should home first and you know, just toggle the uh, input switch or set a register bit 15 and you can execute uh, a homing routine. All right, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, home to a hard stop with stall detect works pretty good. And 